Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the closing ceremony for the Wall at Heels visit in Audubon. We are honored to have the Wall at Heels with us in Audubon. On Veterans Day 1996, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund unveiled a half-scale replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., designed to travel to communities throughout the United States. Since its dedication, the Wall at Heels has visited more than 350 cities and towns throughout the nation, spreading the memorial's healing legacy to millions. Bringing the wall home to communities throughout our country allows the souls enshrined in the memorial to exist one, one more time among family members and friends in the peace and comfort of family surroundings. The traveling exhibit known as the Wall at Heels allows the many thousands of veterans who have been unable to cope with the prospect of facing the wall to find the strength and courage to do so with their own, within their own communities, thus allowing the healing process to begin. I am Senior Master Sergeant John Wetzel, United States Air Force retired, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies for this evening's program. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as able for the singing of our national anthem by United States Army Korean War veteran Wayne Hansen and remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming on the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in her gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Wayne. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our guest speaker this evening is Iowa Army National Guard, Lieutenant Colonel Don Mozinski. Lieutenant Colonel Donald Mozinski was born in Fairfield, Iowa in December 1966 and grew up in Fairfield, graduating from Fairfield Public Schools in 1985. He attended Simpson College where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Management in 1990. In February 2012, he earned his Master's degree in Education from Graceland University. While attending Simpson College, Lieutenant Colonel Mozinski enlisted in the Iowa Army National Guard in 1987 as a personnel specialist with Headquarters and Headquarters Company 224th Engineer Battalion at Fairfield. He held positions of Unit Personnel Specialist, Unit Legal Specialist, and Unit Clerk prior to his commissioning in April of 1993. After receiving his commission, he served as Engineer Platoon Leader, Operations Officer, Battalion Maintenance Officer, Logistics Officer, and Commander of Headquarters and Headquarters Company 224th, and G4 Supply and Services Officer. In January 1991, Lieutenant Colonel Mozinski deployed to Germany with the 224th for six months in support of Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and deployed again from October 2004 to January 2006 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. His military awards include the Bronze Star, 
Army Commendation Medal with two oak leaf clusters, Army Achievement Medal with two oak leaf clusters, the National Defense Service Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal, Iowa Humanitarian Service Ribbon, and the Iowa National Guard Outstanding Unit Award. Lieutenant Colonel Mozinski is employed by the Iowa Army National Guard, where he serves as the G4 Supply and Services Officer. Lieutenant Colonel Mozinski, his wife Jennifer, and their three children, Sarah, Rachel, and Luke, live in Audubon, Iowa. Lieutenant Colonel Mozinski is a member of the committee to bring the wall that heals to Audubon County. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Don Mozinski. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the privilege to be part of this Vietnam War closing ceremony. It is an honor to join you today in Audubon to pay tribute to our Vietnam veterans. I would like to thank the Audubon Economic Development Committee and the committee that brought the wall to Audubon for all their hard work in making this weekend possible. At this time, would the committee please stand and be recognized. In addition, I would like to thank Joe and Peggy Bauer for the invitation to participate in the ceremony. Since I received this invitation from the Bowers back in May, I have spent many hours searching for the right words to honor a group of Americans in uniform that have sacrificed so much, much more than we'll ever know. While contemplating this message, I felt complex. As a veteran myself, we share the war experience. However, the Vietnam veteran did not have the support as current veterans, which saddens me. The question that I have been asked over and over is, why we serve? It all begins with a uniform. I'm holding a, a jersey, a football jersey. It may just be a 25-year-old jersey. These days it might even qualify to be what some teams call a throwback jersey. But at the time, this jersey meant that I belonged to a team, a group that held a common goal to win. We had a fight song and a warrior mascot. But to me, this is much more. This jersey is one of my first uniforms. It was kept, I kept this uniform in a closet, under my bed, in a box, or just lost between moves for, yes, the last 25 years. Did I realize what this jersey meant to me? No, not at all. But it was something that just had to be kept. There is a song that Kenny Chesney calls, Kenny says, Chesney sings called The Boys of Fall that summarizes the feelings that come with being part of a team, a team of warriors. They didn't let just anybody in that club took every ounce of heart, sweat, and blood to get to wear those game day jerseys down the hall. The kings of school, man, we're the boys of fall. Later in the song, he sings, I got your number, I got your back. When you're against the wall, when you're, you mess with one man, you got us all. 
But after listening to that song several times, I realized that you could apply this type of loyalty to any group. It is this type of loyalty that binds together us all. If you have ever volunteered to be part of a group or an organization, you understand the meaning behind this message. In turn, this is just one jersey or uniform that I have worn in my life. It does not matter if it is a football, basketball, band, choir, or even, even the many uniforms we have all worn after high school. It is the relationships made, the friendships that were forged, that one cherishes and carries forward in life. Here is a much older uniform. What does this uniform mean? Well, we will get to that. This has been a weekend. We have paused and realized the contributions and sacrifices of those who served our country. And just who are these men? Who are these people we are recognizing? Mostly they are ordinary Americans. Except these Americans took an oath. Each veteran who has served in the U.S. Armed Forces has one thing in common. Each of these has raised your right hand and take the following oath. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and the allegiance of the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the law and regulations, so help me God. A very simple oath, and one that takes only about 20 seconds to recite. When one takes this oath, there is no possible way to know the impact it will have on our lives. I think of the names on the wall and the survivors here today and how this oath impacted their lives along with their families. What an incredible group of Americans. Ottawa County has a very proud and rich heritage of military service. I recognize now two Vietnam veterans that gave the ultimate sacrifice. U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Kenneth Allen McLean from Exira and U.S. Navy Sailor Donald Dean Haskins from Audubon. Of course, I am not originally from Audubon, but it is events like such as this that make me proud to call it home. As I turn back to this veteran's uniform on this stage, I have to confess that this is not just another veteran. It is a uniform my grandfather, Jack Blau, wore. It is extremely difficult for me not to become overwhelmed with emotion as I share his story. It was only through the help of his fellow soldiers that I learned of his service of his service story. His experience included a lot of trauma, loss of life, and living conditions that you and I would consider overwhelming and certainly substandard. This veteran, my grandfather, my hero. Maybe this war experience was too traumatic for him to share with me, his young grandson. I believe the war and all its dangers, violence and tragedy is an experience that is hard to share because it's sad, lonely and depressing. 
and the reality, it is too painful. It doesn't matter how many years has passed, their silence continues as they stand with us today. And yet, you might ask, why do we serve? Today I wear the Army Blue Dress uniform, which is both with both a privilege and an honor. I am blessed to be associated and part of an organization that is much bigger than me. However, my uniform is not what motivated me to share my thoughts with you today. It was my grandfather's uniform and service. Being a soldier, I found myself in a different uniform on a different team with a mascot. Now a castle, a bald eagle, and a flag. We are brothers and sisters in arms, and we currently constantly feel the power of a strong team. But what separates us and veterans from all other teams is that we are willing to die for each other, our country, and you. You've heard me ask the question, why do we serve? Ultimately, everyone in uniform has their own, has to answer their own, has to have their own answer. But for me, it's about family and securing their freedom. It is serving alongside people who believe in this great country and are prepared to sacrifice to make it possible. I hope you walk away from this weekend with a firm understanding that our United States Armed Forces is all about people and their willingness to sacrifice for your freedom. Tank ships and planes do not win our nation's wars any more than a pair of shoes wins a race or a glove wins a baseball game. It takes soldiers, marines, sailors, airmen, and coast guardmen to serve, secure this, to secure this nation. And we as a society owe a debt of gratitude for those who have manned the formations of these services over the years. Well, it started with a uniform, and I continue to serve because I am inspired, inspired by all the veterans who came before me. Lastly, I would like to thank you for attending this program to acknowledge the service of our Vietnam veterans, and I wish to extend my heartfelt appreciation to those veterans and their families for their service and sacrifice. One thing is certain, our Vietnam veterans live their life by honoring their oath and cherishing family, God, and country. Thank you. We thank Colonel Mozinski for his uh, inspiring speech. Each day, we have a Vietnam veteran share some of their memories with us. This evening, our Vietnam veteran speaker is Chaplain Dwayne Ferguson, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army, retired. Chaplain Ferguson served as an Army chaplain for 25 years active duty to include a tour in Vietnam and 13 years in the Iowa National Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Dwayne Ferguson. Veterans, families, and friends. During the Vietnam War, Mar Haggard sang a song, When they run down my country, 
They are walking on the fighting side of me. He also sang about still flying old glory at the courthouse. This wall contains the names of 58,953 Americans who gave the ultimate sacrifice. They, along with many of us, I remember in the evening, we would be singing the song, Lord, I want to go home. You remember that, veterans? Lord, we want to go home. I want to go home to my sweetheart. I want to go home to my fiance. I want to go home to my baby girl. I want to go home to my baby boy. I want to go home to mom and dad. This number is not only statistics, but persons who had a childhood. They had a life. They had a family they left behind. They had grandparents and parents, spouses, children, fiancés, and babies. These last four days, we have honored these, our heroes, who made the ultimate sacrifice. They are our band of brothers, our comrades forever. Veterans and families, we can find a healing and a powerful connection through our common military experience. We hope this wall continues to bring the positive power of healing that we need. We pray for the gold star, mothers and fathers. It's not easy for families to pick up the shattered pieces of losing a loved one, and maybe some of you have experienced this. One of the most emotional times was when I, as a chaplain, had to notify a family about 7 a.m. in the morning that their loved one had been killed. That young wife or mother would say, no, it's not true. I just got a letter from him. It can't be true. They gave their life for our freedom. The motto that the Gold Star mothers and fathers live by is, it's not time that heals, it's what we do with it. It's our service and support for God and country and for the other Gold Star families. My experience has been that families have suffered the roller coaster of emotions and broken hearts. Today we honor and respect and appreciate our fallen heroes as we reflect on their service. Lest we forget, we remember those who gave their lives, their sacrifice, their values of duty, honor, and country that these comrades forever exemplified through their service and through their heroism. It gives all of us a sense of pride in bringing honor to the forgotten. We pray that we find peace by connecting to other military families who have suffered losing loved ones. One day in Vietnam, my office was destroyed by our ammunition dump blowing up. I was visiting troops at the hospital at the time. I could have been injured or killed. Another time as we headed back to our base in our Jeep, the military police stopped me and my assistant and said, someone's watching out for you, the road is mined. The MPs told us a mine could have blown up your Jeep. Like many of our other veterans, I flew in a helicopter each week to visit our troops up and down the roads where the engineers were working 24 hours a day and night. We got shot at several times. Were it not for the grace of God, my name would be on that wall. Thirteen of my fellow chaplains were killed in Vietnam. At one compound, soldiers told me they had run out of ammunition the night before. The enemy withdrew at the same time. Don't tell me miracles didn't happen. 
In closing, we must keep faith with those who have had to leave behind, we've had to leave behind. President Abraham Lincoln said in Gettysburg during the Civil War in 1863, we highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. These 58,953 have not died in vain. We salute our comrades forever. We salute this band of brothers. We salute these our heroes. They are not forgotten by Almighty God or by us. God bless them in the heavenly realm. God bless their families and their friends. And God bless the United States of America, the greatest land in the world in which to live. And it's wonderful to live in Audubon because this is where the patriotic people are. And God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. It is important that the significance of the contributions and sacrifices of our Vietnam veterans are not forgotten by future generations. To that end, we are pleased to have two presentations by local students. The first, on highly decorated Vietnam War veteran and former Secretary of the Navy, James Webb, is given by Audubon High School student, Sarah Mozinski, daughter of Lieutenant Colonel Don Mozinski and his wife, Jennifer. Sarah? 